So mm -hmm. I think the loser of this fights BB. Oh, okay. All right, now we haven't seen this guy on stream yet, but he is probably the scariest guy in bracket right now. He is honestly looking for a three-peat here. Venia has, the guy has just been really dominating the scene here lately. And when you see him play, you can see why. His aggression, his speed, his movement, it's, you, he really does, not only is this a very unique character, but he absolutely plays him so uniquely to great effect. Wow, that neutral and forward air almost connecting, that might have even been a stop. But regardless, that means that Utopian Ray is still alive here, and Palutena always has ways to weasel her way back into the driver's seat of a game. You know, just kind of lightly pushes you over and takes the wheel. Just nares it. And that's one of the ways to do it. Just playing very carefully, barely being touched for the past 10 seconds or so. Utopian Ray takes the stock. It is responded in kind very quickly, but nonetheless, considering the momentum that Venia had at the beginning of this game, that's pretty good for Utopian Ray. Mm -hmm. As long as it doesn't give Venia the momentum back, which of course, <laughs> I mean, almost an inevitability. Look at this. What are these? I actually, I really have to compliment Utopian Ray's disadvantage state right now. A lot of people, once they get hit by Venia, they kind of go through a, a, you know, a blender. Yeah. But he's been doing a really good job picking his uh, defensive options well, because he gets hit and maybe only takes 30% of pop. Ooh. Uh-uh. All right, solid back throw. Means that now Venia is trapped on the ledge and this is one of the things that makes Utopian Ray such a good player. His ledge trapping is just so, it's just scary. And he stays mobile while doing it. He's not necessarily sedentary while he's trying to, you know, punish you on the ledge. He's going back and forth, nice. sort of faking out when he's actually going to attack. And that seems to be working out really well for him right here. Venia has yet to find a solid opening. They're finally a grab, putting Ray off stage. Another grab doing even more damage. Oh, I'm the just forward barely this. misses. That was so close. I saw the beginning, so I think that was an up tilt from Ray. Is that? Wow. I think that might have been some questionable DI, but that forward throw was super fast. So. All right, just eat him right out of there. Bit of an overextension from Venia. It cost him pretty dearly because now this game is even once again. Although on a even is such a uh, such an ephemeral concept when you're talking about a match between Palutena and Greninja. They just do so much damage to each other. Oof. This is big. These up airs might lead to even more damage, but once again, the disadvantage from Utopian Ray has been really good. Choosing his air dodges exactly when he needs to. Probably not gonna air dodge off stage the next time though, if I had to guess. You can't get too comfortable doing that against Venia. <gasps> he actually teleports behind him. Such a creative option, and Venia was definitely not ready for it. These guys are both in the red, just about to peak past 100%. And that means that there are kill options available to both of these players. That up smash from Greninja is so scary. Goes for another one of those. Actually, Utopian Ray has been air dodging a lot of these moves and has been getting away for it. Another air dodge off stage this time. Venia is able to just get damage here, but he needs a big finisher. Uh. And he put himself on the edge there. If that cost him the game, he would have nobody to blame but his sound. <gasps> that back throw is going to be big, possibly, but Venny yeah, not able to actually find any sort of finisher here. Look at this, the mobility between these two. That explosive Ooh. flame was so gutsy, but it just barely misses on Venia. And now 146, Ugh. that neutral air is really big. That's this not could gonna be huge. Oh, I feel like in that situation, he probably 
Because I know he knows that he's going to hold out and not get the combo from the back air. But if they, like, read the jump and then go for the up air early to catch him. Yeah, if you're Venia, you have to be careful with how you move. Just because that explosive flame can end the game from across might... the stage. No. Back throw's not enough, but 143%. And Venia is once again on the lead. Ledge has to be scared. Oh, well, that was big. That should it. be it. And up to finish it. One final overextension on Ray's part. It goes for that dash attack. But <laughs> against, like, nobody could have predicted this. Venia shielded it. Think about that. Venia won from holding shield that game. Oh my god. I want this meme to die. <laughs> Start the battle. You know the funny thing? If he, even if he like wins with shield more, that doesn't detract from the meme. If anything, it makes it more powerful. Yeah. It's like, look how shocking this was. <laughs> also, look how cool Venia's tattoo is. That is all. <laughs> it's been a work in progress for months, and now it's done. So it's finished all the way? I think so, yeah. So that's why uh, Venya's been opting to wear sleeves, so he can keep his shirt open. <laughs> Wait, is that how that works? Uh, that's 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 what I'm assuming the logic is. I didn't realize that, like, I, is there, like, a set amount of, clo like, cloth that a clothing has? You can't go too low? Why does he need to displace from sleeves to chest? Because he's got to have something uh, open. Why can't he just have both open? Well, then he'd just be not wearing a shirt at all. But anyway. <laughs> if he's really proud. Whoa. <laughs> all right. Now, all right. That's that's my own fault. That's everyone else here. We apologize because uh, Ray is also pretty cool. That just reading the counter, getting the down air was really big for him. And that means that now he can run away with a lead. This is something that we didn't really have the chance to do. They were always neck and neck, even though they would fight out. They would really fight it out. Do it again. He's dead. No, Never he's mind. Not. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. Palu with a stock lead is a really scary thing. Except, you know, when you do that, it's all right. You know, Ray is going for, sort of uncharacteristically, just goes for a hard commitment. You know? Mm -hmm. Like he went for that dash attack in game one. Right there, he went for the up smash and it cost him. All right. Okay. Good job. Getting a two frame on that down tilt means that he can once again play to the lead a little bit. The difference between like being at zero and the opponent is at like 100 <laughs> on their, when you're at the same stock and when you finally take that stock, it's just, it's so big. Because you can change the play style to now, okay, I can just like get chip damage. I can, every neutral interaction, every neutral win is huge for me. Mm -hmm. You can tell that's the what's in Utopian Ray's mind right now. He's already managed to get 89% on Tavenia. They've been literally playing an even game uh, minus that first stock. But now, uh, Venia evening it up finally. Except that, oh, no. He went for the reverse on that. I think he went for back air, but he got an air. I think that was a missing ah. foot. That, and there it is. Scoop him up. That light might come from heaven, but it uh, originates from hell. Right, where are we going? Uh, I would guess, okay, so maybe Battlefield? Town and city. Town and city. It's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, I think that probably this is the closest to FD as he can get, considering that it, that really does, if you look at the bands, yeah. FD and Kalos. Knocked out. Uh, yeah, Ray does not want to deal with an FD variant. And this is probably the, yeah. like the, you know, the, it's like there's FD and then one shade away from FD is Kalos. And then two shades from that <laughs> is, uh, you know, it's like. Check play out my it's, it's latest like the book, 50 Shades of FD. <laughs> Oh. Edge guarding a store near you. <laughs> Tagline. Uh. It's just like critics report. Why can't I land? <laughs> anyway, so uh, Ray with a small lead here. Uh, he, he does like he. Uh, uh, Vinny is at the percent where like 
if the cards line up right, Ray could get a kill right now, but it's unlikely. Okay. Ooh. Oh my I, god. Once again, I really have to respect yeah. the defensive options that Utopian Ray is picking. You know, these guys have played a lot, and I think maybe that's sort of translating where he's air dodges have been on point right there. That get up attack just cutting off his aggression. Maybe you maybe Venia needs to hold back just a little bit because that's the way that uh Utopian Ray has been avoiding most of those uh big follow-ups. Last attack was big, but it wasn't enough to actually do the deed. Ray has to act fast before the percents get too far away from him. He also has to act fast before the FD variant comes back. Okay. Right, there it is. Evening up those stocks. Okay. Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, Great what? read by Venia. Unfortunately, it didn't pan out. But I'd say on the whole, things aren't looking ah. too bad for him. He's only taken 2%, and this has basically ah. just been one huge combo. Is he going to go all the way up there? All right, this is what I was... Like, uh, so Tony Ray was basically getting out of disadvantage by just dealing with the immediate threat. But now Venny is being more careful. He's staying outside of the range and waiting for Utopian Ray to throw out that option. Ooh. But right there, he doesn't at, th at that point. So smart. Nope. Great awareness from Ray. But even if his disadvantage is getting, is still good, it's not enough to get him back to neutral. He was avoiding those kill hits for a long time. But over time, it just got to like 150. And now he really is playing from behind. He needs to be getting some kind of early stock. You know, he was going for some of those a bit weird aggressive options. You know, like the dash tech, like the up smash. And this is a situation where maybe they might work out better for him. Just because, you know, he gets that up smash when... I kind of want to see more reads on the jumps or with, like, up air. I feel like that would, it, at the very least, like, add some pressure to, like, when he, how he's coming <gasps> down. Oh, no. Oh, he went so far. Oh, he kept his jump, so he's fine. But now he's, like, getting quite a lot of damage racked up on himself that even if he gets this kill, then he's going to be in a pretty comfortable position. Ooh. This is a really pivotal moment here. This is, like, the point... So, if... if if Ray is able to take Venia's stock right now, he absolutely can keep this game. But Why not up air? Would up air not have killed? I don't think it would have. Uh, Greninja is a super fast fall. Uh, maybe. I mean, Town does have a really high ceiling. It know. also might have been complicated with, like, he would have landed before because he was on the platform. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of think we're going to have to... Oh, really nice counter, though, to get him off of him. But this back throw could be big. Sends him way off stage. The teleport recovery has been really helping out Utopian Ray getting back to the ledge. Counter is now a kill option. But at this point, I don't think Benio would go for something like that. Maybe now he would. I don't know. Because getting grabbed is like the worst thing in the world right now, right? Ooh. Yeah, just send that little guy. Go get him. Go, my child. Vanquish my foes. Kill my enemies. That's going to be it, though. Great job following through. And that's one of those things with Greninja speed. Just, he's just on top of that target throughout. And then as soon as the invincibility ended, he got the back air and wins the set. Venia still on track to possibly get this 3 p as he's moving on into winner's semis.